Functional similarity algorithms uh, are used to group any number of files based on the similarity between themselves and all of the other files in their cluster. So Reversing Labs has developed an algorithm called RHA1, which is our functional similarity algorithm. It quite literally translates to Reversing Labs hashing algorithm and has a, a versioning next to it. It's called 1. Uh, what it does, it looks at executable files. So it is an algorithm which we specifically create to hash a specific executable type. And today, it supports a couple of different file formats. It supports portable executable file formats, which are exe files and DLLs and so on for Windows. It supports ELF executables, which are Linux files, right? And they're, you know, your typical SO binaries and so on on Linux. It supports Mac binaries, which are executable files for Mac OS, and they're the bins and so on of the world, right? So for each and every one of those, RHA1 is implemented separately. So there's a separate implementation for portable executable files, for ELF files, for Mac OS. So really talking about family of algorithms with the idea to create precision level hashes for each and every one of these files. So if you talk about just the portable executable file as an example, and we try to visualize it as, as a block, which has the portable executable headers, and then has the sections which have code and have data, and then there's probably like an overlay at the end of the file. What, port, what RHA1 for these particular executable types will do, it will look at the header information, just the bits of the header information. It will look at you know, how the file is laid out, right? What comes before? Is it code? Is it data? Is it, you know, functions, is it references, is it resources, all that stuff, you know, where things are, this layout is important. And it will look at some of the code as well. So if there's a function here, which is the entry point function, we'll take some of its code, we'll, we'll hash it together and to create uh, to create the ultimate RHA hash for the binary. And there's four hashes we compute for the portable executable file format. So what we get is the precision level uh, at 25%, which is taking just the header information, preparing it in a spe special way and hashing it together. So this is the least amount of similarity you can have between this file and our entire corpus of 10 billion files we have in the cloud. So at that lowest precision, this file would match maybe 100,000 different files in this particular large data set, which is cool. So you start with something which is, you know, 10 billion hashes, and then looking at the lowest precision level, you go down and say, okay, 100,000 of those are all grouped up nicely together, right? And then you say, but that's not good enough. I want to find files which are even more similar to each other. Then you go down a level and say, well, at 50% similarity, this 100,000 is then split up into a couple of different groups of, let's say, 25,000. 25,000 samples, 25K, right? So that would be the second level of precision, right? And then it just goes on further, grouping these files better and better together until we get to the 100% functional similarity. That means the code of this file and anything similar to it is identical. And that doesn't mean the hashes of the files are identical. There can be some changes here in the overlay, or even some of the data might be different. But ultimately, the code, the way the code relates to each other and relates to the layout of the file, that's all identical. You have four different hashes to represent every single binary. And the way threat hunters use this information is they start with this low, highest bucket, so the largest amount of samples. They collect all of them, they process them, extract all of the metadata information contained within them to create rules to detect whether or not this, is, like this particular file is a malicious family or not. If possible, you would use the lowest precision hash, but if the files are packed or something like that, then the lowest precision level would not necessarily work. You want to go down even further and you want to compute this hash on the unpacked content. So that's where our static analysis platform extracts the files and computes this hash for every single file 
the FE extract as well. So you can track not only the pack content, but also the unpacked content as well. So now in the same context of that threat hunter, if you're looking at the content, you're really looking for the unpacked binaries and you want to create rules which are evaluated against the unpacked binaries. There, you can have that selection again and say, is the 25% enough or do I need higher levels, have a better signature match and therefore yield lesser false positives. So ultimately, RHA1 as a functional similarity algorithm is used to group binaries into buckets and only if the buckets themselves are exclusively malicious, can we use this algorithm to also do classification. Reversing Labs does this by itself, and products we ship come with an offline database. We have, you know, a couple of hundred thousand different hashes within that database, which say if a new binary out there is similar to something we already saw, and it, that particular file has, is, that particular bucket is exclusively malicious, we can classify that file right away and say, by similarity, this new file is also malicious. Those, let's say, 200,000 hashes that we ship the product with can classify more than 600 million binaries in our cloud. So out of 10 billion files, more than 600 million can ultimately be classified just by functional similarity.